Hello, I'm David Hill, musical director of the Bach Choir. Um, we've got a very exciting concert coming up in the Royal Festival Hall. Uh, music by a former musical director of the choir, uh, Rafe Vaughan Williams. Of course, we're all celebrating this year. And it's a particular thrill to welcome a wonderful soprano soloist and good friend, Liz Watts, to talk about um, this marvellous piece, The Garden of Proserpine. Interestingly, uh, Vaughan Williams kind of banned uh, early in his life. He didn't want it performed again, but as Michael Kennedy has described it's actually a, a, a jewel in his wonderful um, outpouring of music that he was doing at this stage in his in his career. And if you like, um, a kind of prelude to the great sea symphony, which we're also performing in the uh, in this concert. So, Liz, welcome. Thank you for joining uh, me on this. Um, how how are you getting on with this garden of proserpine? Because obviously, it's it's kind of new to all of us. Yeah, it's, it's got some really beautiful lyric lines to it. It's um, got very wide range for soprano, um, which is really interesting. Although the C symphony is not dissimilar in its kind of tessitura and sort of colour, um, you know, what, what, what it demands of the soloist. Um, but yeah, beautiful lines, um, really interesting text um still sort of getting on the deeper meanings of it all you know there's this, you know some really um deep and meaningful things about um life and um how we how actually death is a good thing because we can experience life we wouldn't want everyone to live forever and you know because because um proserpine is is the goddess of, of, of both mm -hmm. the um underworlds but then she comes and brings spring to um to the to the work to the up, upper world as it were so um it, it's a really really interesting text and there's this wonderful theme that keeps coming back throughout the piece and um i'm really enjoying working on it Great. Well, that's a wonderful introduction to it. I mean, I also think um, I, I did it many years ago and remember loving doing it, but I haven't done it since. And uh, that was getting back into the whole thing of it. It's superbly well constructed. And I, I sort of struggle with what, why he was not sure about it. And it really was obviously a, a work he was experimenting in all sorts of ways. And, and as you just described, particularly in the sort of um, tessitura of the voice and, and indeed the orchestration, which is very... Uh, actually similar to a lot in the C Symphony uh, and in the way you've described it for your vocal lines. As a singer, Liz, what what does Vaughan Williams mean to you as a matter of interest? Well, I mean, C Symphony is probably one of my favourite things of all ever to sing. I absolutely love it. I mean, I, I jokingly refer to it as my party piece because I just, I, I absolutely love C Symphony. So, you know, that is a huge thing for me. Um, I probably first came across Vaughan Williams as a chorister um, in my late teens at Norwich Cathedral um, doing Let All the World in Every Corner Sing. Um, and, you know, you know, you sort of think, oh, that's Vaughan Williams. And you think, oh, yes, I've, I've heard this and I've heard that, you know. And then you've got the Lark Ascending and all, and all those sort of things. And gradually you build up this picture of the composer. Um, I've sung uh, the Third Symphony quite a lot and also uh, Symphonia Antarctica. I, I sort of, you know cornered the market in wordless symphonies for a while um and then um, you know I, I so I just feel it really suits me and I love the English idiom I love the modalities in it and um they just really touch me um and I feel you know really close as a composer perhaps not for me quite as close as Britain because I'm an East Anglian girl but perhaps if I'd have been born you know in the other part of the world I'd feel differently but um but I do definitely feel that, you know, the, the way I'm really sensitive to tunings. And I think for me, there's such beauty, especially when you hear an English orchestra, not to diss any of my wonderful colleagues across the world. But, you know, when you hear an English orchestra play with those really nuanced tunings in, in these in these modes, it's, it's just really, truly wonderful. Isn't it? Um, I, I, that's a um, yeah, it's a lovely description of. I think you know. I don't know whether you would agree. I mean, the most important voice in in in, in English music in the early part of the twentieth uh, century. I mean, people we you know people have talked about the importance of Elgar. He, of course, he is too, but with with a sort of different whole kind of different approach to it. And there's something about. The, the fact that you know you you were uh, a singer in 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 a cathedral choir, um, and that I was a boy chorister, and something about Vaughan Williams 
you know, editing a hymnal for a start off, and <laughs> collecting all this, all these hymn, old hymns and, uh, you know, in, in all their different modes. And he was, he was sort of saying to other composers, listen, we've got all of this. Why don't you just use this as a, as a kind of a, a template for, for, for what you're going to be saying as a composer. And I think that was a remarkable gift to, to, to English music. And uh, you're absolutely right. I totally agree. Um, so and of course we we've also chatted with your will, will be your colleague on this I'm sure I has on previous many on uh, many other occasions Roddy Williams who's also waxes so lyrical about the Sea Symphony as being one of the great the great pieces and I think um, we're all looking forward to uh, being able to put on this uh, concert in this truly symphonic uh, work uh, for uh, chorus and soloists and orchestra and so everyone really gets a, a wonderful kind of evening of getting stuck into it including the orchestra um so thank you for that just um interestingly um you of course had a wonderful um summer with the proms and nielsen and so on and you've been very busy abroad what what have you got going on at the moment this well um i've also got um straight after this Vaughan williams concert i've also doing an amazing thing which actually i did earlier in the year in the barbican but we're doing it at city halls in glasgow with the bbc scottish symphony and we're doing scott of the antarctic live with the film behind wow. and and the orchestra and me well, my little tiny my little coffin spit anyway but um doing um doing the soundtrack and we we did it earlier it's just totally epic I mean it's an amazing film as well mm -hmm. um oh it's so thrilling such a thrilling thing to do so I'm dead excited about that and I get to do that about a week after this concert um and I'm also preparing a Wigmore Hall program um which um is about muses so I've got Wagner's Weizen Donk Leader in there mm -hmm. some Strauss that he wrote for his wife in there um, Debussy that he wrote for Madame Vanier in there, and um, then two composers, two Czech composers, um, Martinu and Kapralova, who, who were lovers, so a man and a woman composer, which is really interesting. So I've got to learn Czech, so that's quite a big project. Um, but that that's I've got some runnings for that, and that's in, in the 2nd of February at the Wigmore. Um, and then I've also got um, Strauss for Last Songs coming up with orchestra in Jersey. Um, so that's, um, yeah lots of lovely things really um and uh yeah but i've got to say this that i don't not sure you can better in any english choral music the moment of that one flag in that yeah. moment where everyone is together and you know i am just hugely looking forward to that again because that moment is spine tingling <laughs> and always i have to have to slightly control myself to stop myself like welling up because it's just the most epic moment. So, you know, I just hope people will come to this concert even just to hear that amazing moment, really. Oh, absolutely right, Liz. And um, we're all looking forward to it. So it's November the 17th in the Royal Festival Hall with the Philharmonia Orchestra, the Bach Choir, Liz Watts, and of course, Roddy Williams. And uh, do come along for what will be a special a special event actually for the Bach Choir because um, most people won't know that in fact he was a singing member before he became musical director and he had an association would you believe it? he did, actually was an administrator for the choir in some areas uh, for, and so therefore he was involved with the Bach Choir for 25 years so um, there is a real link he was the fifth musical director and I'm only the ninth and so it gives you a kind of uh, sense of where things have been and we're really looking forward to celebrating his amazing legacy and thanks Liz we're looking forward to having you at the festival hall do come along folks if you um, if you can it'll be a great evening <laughs>